Today on the Lucia Goes of Her Show. So I've been living abroad now for, for a long time in Germany, in China, and, and now I've been living in Austria for, for five years. You know, I just feel like this is more like my soul's language. So interesting how our brains work, right? Like if you're using different languages, I didn't really know if I'm gonna like it, to be honest. First half year was very difficult for me since I mentioned that I had a culture shock and because I just this year realized how these things can shift very quickly. That was a very, very inspiring experience for me as well. Hi, I'm Lucia and you are watching the Lucia Colors of Heart Show. I'm originally from the Czech Republic, but currently I live in Turkey. I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that the best way to travel abroad is to live with the locals. Before that I lived in Greece and even before that I should live in New York, United States. But it wasn't always like this for me. Like a good girl, I graduated university, I got my degree and found myself a corporate job and long story super short, I was just totally miserable and it took me a while to set myself free. But right now I'm living my best life in Turkey with the love of my life and my own business. I'm super passionate about my hobbies and little projects. For a Halloween party I dress up like a shadow hunter and I was so lucky that I met four members of the Shadow Fam in New York City. Also, does my jacket look familiar to you? Do I remind you of someone? Somebody? Here's your clue. Any answers in the house? Comment below, I wanna know. Emma Swan? will be my forever hero. Another thing I'm obsessed with is personal development. I'm reading tons and tons self-improvement book, books about business, mindset, NLP, marketing, everything you can think of. I'm just obsessed. Because there's always room for self-improvement. Am I right? So this is me in the nutshell and what my show will be about. Living abroad, business and mindset and entertainment. And just before we will start watch first interview with my first guest, just little disclaimer here, like I already said, I'm from the Czech Republic, so my native language is Czech, not English. That means my English don't will be perfect all the time, so if it bothers you, bye. If not, here's the first interview. Welcome, Petra, to this interview. I'm really glad you are here with me today. And I would be very glad if you would share your experience about moving to Vienna. You are originally from Slovakia, right? Yes, exactly. Awesome. So I'm very excited to hear the story. How long it is when you moved to Vienna? So thank you. First of all, thank you so much for reminding me. I'm so glad to be here with you and, and share whatever you're interested in. <laughs> <laughs> to share of course about me uh, living abroad and and um, about my business and so on so first of all I moved uh, abroad around 10 years ago uh, so I've been living abroad now for for a long time and uh, so I lived in different countries I lived in 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 Germany in China and, and now I've been living in Austria for for five years and uh, it's been a journey. I also traveled um, for business to India, to Russia, uh, and to other countries as well. So I really am happy and excited to talk about, uh, you know, that something that's very close to my heart, which is uh, living abroad and, and, and traveling and experiencing other, other cultures. Wow, that's amazing. I had no idea. That was a very <laughs> long interview. Now I'm even more excited to talk about it. <laughs> so which country was your first trip abroad? So the first was uh, Germany. Basically, Germany um, came around because um, I decided to do my master's in Germany instead of staying in Slovakia. So I did my bachelor's in Slovakia and then got a scholarship. So I, I moved to Germany and uh, specifically to, to Passau, which is in Nova Bavaria, which is very traditional, a bit conservative, not very international. <laughs> so it was like a very, very local experience that I had there. And I uh, definitely also had a culture shock, even though I really thought I was well prepared for the culture. And, and I also felt like I could relate to the culture because I'm also someone who really likes systems and um, you know, is very organized and things like that. Um, I realized that it's not really, really that way and that I didn't really know myself so so well, I would also say. And um, I think the, the most beautiful experience with that was really to get to know me and get to know who I am as maybe a Slovak person or who, however you want to describe me, right? But also as an individual, what is important for me and um, 
what is maybe also yeah what makes me me uh, and and then what makes me feel the differences in other cultures so so yeah that was that was a very very inspiring experience for me as well being for the first time living in a completely different country by my by myself as well it was the first time I moved out as well <laughs> from my parents so back then there was a big deal to me that's beautiful were they supportive your parents Yes, uh, yes, um, thank God. <laughs> so there was, I mean, my parents always been really supportive of everything that I was doing, although they always questioned it a little bit because I was a little bit like the black sheep of the family and I always still, I still am. <laughs> I know <laughs> so, that feeling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So I have two brothers and they're older and, um, you know, they are living more left of the traditional life, right? So they, um, they're didn't move abroad they never lived abroad um they they have their jobs and they you know focused on on raising a family so something that's very like a traditional style of living a type of living in, in slovakia i would say because definitely the values are more towards you know the family life and and building a home for it for your family and yeah for me it was a little bit um different and and uh, if basically everything i've been doing i've been doing you know you know, but to be able to grow myself, to experience things, you know, to um, to to try out things, to to experiment with stuff. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I would say that they did support me. Um, they might have thought that I'm crazy at times, but uh, it was all in all, they were very. It was very good experience also for them, I think, because they also got to travel and see places and so on. That's good. And you speak German. Yes, I speak German. I speak my German is better than my English, actually. Um, oh, although, really? <laughs> yes, although German is such a diff difficult language that I still feel that I feel more comfortable speaking in English, even though basically you would say that my German is better <laughs> because I never I never lived in an English speaking country, right? So I've been living for many many years in German speaking country. So of mm -hmm. course, you know, my my even my boyfriend is a uh, is a German. Sorry, is an Austria. Oh my god, if he would if he would hear me now, he would be so offended. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, don't worry. No, it's. I wanted to say that we speak in German. And of course, I said that he's a German. No, he's an Austrian. And um, yeah, and, and we actually um, recently switched to English as well because I'm so mm. used now, like using also English in my in my work and in general. You know, I just feel like this is more like my soul's language. To, to, you know, the, the language that I feel very comfortable using, even though I've never really experience it in a different country which is weird but it is the way it is so so it's very interesting because when we fight we sometimes use german because it's <laughs> it gets a more appropriate language for it but then uh but then we, we really and since he also he he has a company as well he has a startup and their company language is also english so basically you know for the both of us english is somehow a language that we use a lot so yeah it's very interesting sometimes we really switch between the languages Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have something similar with my boyfriend, he's Turkish. So we are communicating in English, but where we get mad, it's like Czech, Turkish, English all together. Mm. <laughs> Even if we don't understand, he don't he doesn't understand Czech, I don't understand Turkish, but we are able to know like when the <laughs> other person is really mad. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> it's actually sweet because like after a while we will start laughing. Just yes. because we don't understand and it's so funny absurd situation so we just end up laughing <laughs> no but it's so interesting how our brains work right like if you're using different languages i just realized last i mean it was just a couple of days ago when i was just writing notes you know like what i need to do that day and i realized i literally in just one sentence i use three like three different words from three different languages you know it's like if somebody would be reading through my notes and be like what is this you know but for me that's just how my brain now works right so there are certain certain words that i like to use in certain languages and you know it just i'm just going to literally write down like one sentence in three different languages so it's very funny how that how that works I'm so relieved. I'm so glad you said it because I'm doing exactly <laughs> the same thing. I'm writing my diary that style, like Czech, English, yeah. sometimes any Turkish word. Like I'm learning. 
I'm not so good at beginner level, but hopefully next year I will be more advanced. <laughs> you have a very good motivation to learn yeah. it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, because we visited family of my boyfriend, his sister with uh, her family, her husband and child, and only child is speaking English. Like he's in the first grade, yeah. so he has like first grade English. So mo most of the time I was speaking to the child, like a very basic conversation and with the sister and hus her husband, it was like very interesting. It was like body language, but yeah. actually it's interesting that even if we weren't able to understand each other with the words, we actually took a lot from just yeah. the body mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. Like I had a feeling we totally understand each other and it was a very nice evening. We just did it <laughs> last week. <laughs> this is very interesting to see it now from a different perspective because for me, like my boyfriend, of course, doesn't speak Slovak, right? So if I visit my, my parents and now this is the case for Christmas, right? So we're traveling this Friday, we're traveling to see my parents and spend the, 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 the Christmas evening with them. And then on the next day, my whole family, which is, again, like I have two brothers with five kids, you know, so it will be a lot of people <laughs> in just like three, three rooms. And it's very interesting because then, you know, my dad speaks a little bit of German and, um, and my mom, I mean, she, she was learning German and Russian right back then, but she doesn't really, she maybe understands a bit, but she can't speak it anymore, right? And, and so it's, it's for me, it's always a bit challenging because then I have to translate a lot, right? So that I can keep up, keep up with everyone. And, um, and, you know, sometimes I'm just wondering like how my boyfriend feels about it, right? Because I'm, I'm sure it's not very pleasant if you're in, in between people who, you know, you don't understand a lot, right? And I'm also not translating all the time because it's really exhausting. So sometimes, you know, I just, you know, I just give up and I'm just sitting there receiving, listening, you know, and then, um, but I do believe that, you know, when the energy is nice and I think that's also what he said, right? Like he said that there's always a very pleasant energy and, and it's nice, nice family and so awesome. Very interesting um, to see also your take on that from the, from the other side of the, of things. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it because actually we had like a little issue with it because my boyfriend is also exhausted to translate all the yeah. time. So yes. sometimes he just for I have a feeling like he forgets about me he and just like forgets forgets <laughs> he's in the moment and just his brain yeah. is off and just accepting Turkish and forgetting um, there is person. I understand Turkish. that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. and and it's really not on purpose it's just really it's it's so exhausting right it's, it's you have to imagine there are people who are being paid for translating right for for an hour and so on and and it's like for them you know they're already used to it right it's their job and it's like they, they do it and maybe don't they don't even think about it so much about it anymore but um for a person who is not a professional i think that's really really exhausting to be constantly translating and for even maybe a couple of hours a day i think that's that's yeah. yeah, so I def, that's why, for instance, I, I need us to maybe to move and be, just be by ourselves, you know, after an, um, maybe an hour of talking, it's like, okay, you know, just <laughs> break, let's break it off a little bit. So yeah, I, I totally understand that. Yeah, we, we look a little turn into relationships from the beginning. <laughs> it's nice. It's time for a movie. You should watch this. Sorry for interrupting this interview, but I just realized why I was talking with Petra about international relationships. I would love to recommend you great French comedy. It's called Serial Bad Weddings and it's seriously great. It's about all traditional French couple. They have four daughters and they all will start dating to the four generals and eventually they will end up married to these four generals. Their parents really aren't happy about it from the beginning, but no spoilers here, watch it by yourself. And if you love it, I also recommend second movie, which came out 2019 and it's also great. So don't miss out, that's all what I wanted to say and now let's continue in the interview, shall we? I just wanted to ask you, you planned from beginning to move abroad long time or your original plan was like two years and I will come back to Slovakia or what was the original I... plan? My original plan was that uh, I will see how it goes. <laughs> so I didn't really know if I'm going to like it, to be honest. Right. So mm -hmm. I remember still being in a car with my dad, him and he was driving me there. And we were talking, we were, we were talking about it, you know, and, and, and I said, you know, I don't know if I'm going to like it. And he said, well, you know, you can always choose whatever you want, you know, when, 
when when the studies is over, right? So I knew that it's going to be two years for sure because that's how long I I had to do my masters, but I didn't know what's going to happen after that. And um, and you know, like the first half year was very difficult for me since I mentioned that I had a culture shock and you know I was by my own by myself, um, so that wasn't easy. But then after that, I. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I started to embrace the experience and and it definitely taught me a lot. And then you know, then I got the job uh, in Germany as well. So so I stayed. But um, then I would say after three years, I was living in Germany, I think for three years, I realized that definitely the, the city itself, right? That wasn't just, it wasn't a place to be. And I also basically I decided that I wanted to move closer to my family. So uh, as I mentioned in between, I was also in China for for some time, but then, you know, I just was, it was like, okay, you know, Vienna seems like a perfect, like a kind of a, uh, you know, big place to be because then I'm close to my family, but at the same time, I still, I can still keep working for the company that I was back then working for. And I even got a promotion back then and became a manager uh, for that specific branch. So I was running the, the branch and and uh, yeah, so I, I would say I was really going with the flow. And it's very interesting because I just this year realized how these things can shift very quickly. You know, like if you think that, oh, you know what? Like for instance, this year, the, the first half of the year, I was constantly just t- talking about traveling. I was like, I really need to go traveling. You know, it was the, the most important thing for me. It was so weird. I had like an urge to just go and, you know, get out of Vienna and just be outside of Vienna and just travel. And 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 so we did like we traveled a lot this year even though it was COVID I still you know um we managed managed to travel quite a lot and then you know what I realized okay you know what I thought that this is what I want to do for maybe a longer extended period of time but I got back and I was like you know what I feel like now I'm good you know I'm good again so I satisfied this need for traveling and now interestingly I want to I feel like moving even back to Bratislava which is not possible right now because my boyfriend has a company here you know but I would be totally fine if you know tomorrow we say okay you know we are moving in back to Bratislava and we'll be totally totally happy about that if you enjoyed this episode give it a like don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be notified about the future episodes and most important thing don't forget to share with your friends and always remember the best way to travel abroad is to live with the locals so I think it's really about the stage of your life and, and you know, what experiences you're having. And, and I just think it's good, you know, to just follow whatever you feel is right for you in the moment and just know that even though you have planned something, it might turn out a completely, in a completely different way, right? So, yeah. Okay, I have so many questions right now. <laughs> <laughs> so first question, what was the biggest culture shock for you in Germany? Mm. You know, it's funny, um, again, like these, the, the differences are not huge, but they're more nuanced, right? So that's why it surprises you. And because if you if you go to China, you just know the culture will be different, right? Or if you go to India, you just know the culture will be super different. But if you go to Germany, you're like, man, you know, you're going to like the culture, it's going to be similar. And then you realize it's not, you know, it's there are still differences. And I don't know, it was, um, it was, I think, Things, for instance, like, um, you know, there is there's this cliches about Germany, like that the Germans um, uh, live to work, right? So work is the, the centerpiece of their lives. And it's not a stereotype. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it is that way, right? So so work is a, like, and, and it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing because even while I was studying, people were focusing really to get a good job at a big famous company or f- big known company, right? So companies like Volkswagen, Siemens, you know, German companies, but can be also like, um, like uh, you know, from different countries, but just like big known companies, that was the biggest thing for everyone because it was like, okay, in Germany, everything is a little bit about also about the status at work. So who do you work for? Is this a big known company? At where, what position do you work? Is it like a managerial position? Are you doing something cool? You know, um, how much do you earn? So it's like, um, it really the focus is very much on this, right? Right. And I must say, for me, it was always more about do I enjoy 
what I'm doing, right? I didn't mind if I was working at Siemens or like Volkswagen, as long as I really enjoyed what I was doing, right? And it was more about the field that I was working in and that I felt like I can connect it to it. And then I am maybe contributing to make the world better, right? So all these things were like a bigger factor, big contributor to, to, that, to that. And so I felt that was a little bit like a clash where, where it didn't fully fit my, my values and my, my, um, my identity. And for sure, also that um, also the relationships um, in Germany are funny in a sense that Germany is a big country, of course. And and what people do is they just move in two completely different countries, all across the country, uh, cities all across the country, and be in a long distance relationship for years, and they don't mind. It's super weird, you know. <laughs> and it was also back then I, I had a boyfriend like in in Passau, right? So we met there while studying. And, and just, he just moved away all across the country and was kind of, you know, expecting me to just be fine with it, right? So we have a long distance relationship now. That's how it's going to be now for, for years, right? And then there is the thing like, oh, you know, but, and also I can't quit my job because it wouldn't look good in the resume, which I never understood. I was like, well, it doesn't work for you. You're not happy with it and you're not going to quit because it wouldn't look good in your resume, you know? These are the things that I wasn't really fully aligned with and that's where I felt like you know um, this is not really this you know I, and I, it's not I'm not saying that it's either good or bad you know I'm not trying to judge it or evaluate it or say you no know, there is a better way of doing whatever it's just the fact that you know I think um, everyone's different right and your values has to match the values of the place you're living in in the moment they're not fully like when, when they're completely in the complete opposite right they might not be the same but when they're really clashing Right. If you feel like they're complete opposite to what you believe in and it's important to you, it's very difficult to find your way in the country and to fully integrate in the culture. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can totally relate it. I lived in Greece for eight months mm. and I had this culture shock in what you are describing right now. Because like uh, from the working perspective, like in the Czech Republic, we love deadlines. <laughs> we love oh. the structure. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, everything yeah. has to be in the order. And Greeks are like, we have time, we will do it. Like I, I needed to um, finish some paperwork before I was leaving, like a residency card and like a deal with the foreign police. And like they were so relaxed. And I was like, I'm leaving in three days. I need it right now. Like, help me. And they yes. were just relax. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can imagine. And yes. that, that can be very frustrating. So that wasn't the right country for me. That was like very <laughs> frustrating for me. So I have to leave. And also, the weather was too hot for me but mm. but this was like really interesting for me to watch the working habits basically yes. it was like everything so slow yeah easy, no stress it must be nice actually <laughs> it must be nice i'm sure it's nice for the person because they're not stressing themselves out right but if you are the exact opposite it's, it's also difficult for you to you know to yeah, and I think sometimes it's good for you, right? Because it might show you a different way of doing things and you know, maybe you learn something from it, maybe you take something from it and realize maybe some forms of work can even work better for you. But sometimes if it's really like, you know, uh, in the complete opposite, it's, it's very difficult to, to then say, you know what, now I'm going to be more relaxed or you know what, I'm now I'm going to be just the flexible, chaotic person if I'm the one who's actually organized and, and likes deadlines, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I don't think that's, that's that's ideal. Yeah, so I move away. I switch countries to Turkey. Now I'm in Turkey. <laughs> and, and you're happy with it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. So far, I'm happy. <laughs> that's awesome. That's Next time you will see. I immersed myself into the culture. I saw also the differences between how different countries and cultures do sales. In certain situations, it's important that you know the language because you might really end up in uncomfortable positions. There was a very crazy experience. Uh, everyone thought like, well, what is wrong with her? Like, why, why does she think that she could do this? That was when I decided then that I want to start my own company. At some point, you you just want to have your things around. You know, you just don't want to live in you know, someone else's stuff all the time. It might not be easy to make friends, that you really have to challenge yourself, go out to events and meet people. It's a culture shock, that's fine. I think that releases a little bit the uh, tension and the stress and that it can be really difficult and really challenging. It can be beautiful, but it can be also very, very challenging.
If you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be notified about the future episodes. And most important thing, don't forget to share with your friends and always remember, the best way to travel abroad is to live with the locals.